Hey, Kevin. What do you have there? Well, this is a water-cooled TIG torch, and it's for my Everlast 275 MTS Lightning, which is my MIG TIG stick machine. Big monster. <laughs> this is just going to help a lot with, especially like aluminum welding, where the torch gets so hot because you're running so much amperage. This is an air-cooled torch, or argon-cooled, you know, using the compressed gas on the machine itself. This is the water-cooled torch. You can see the difference in the size of these things. And I'm sure you're thinking, now oh, wait a minute, those look really, really different from one another. Well, that's because this air-cooled torch, well, this is all assembled. You know, this is the torch head. So you've got the, the cap on the back that holds the collet body in, and the collet, and then the tungsten is just sticking out of the end of the torch right there. And this is a fixed head. It does not move. This is fixed in this position. And this water-cooled torch, this has got a swivel head on it, so you can adjust this any which way you want to go. These are all the parts that come with the torch. So you have three different size cups, a collet body, a tungsten. That does not come with the machine. You have to provide that three different size collets that fit into the collet body, and then two end caps, a long one and a short one. And to put it all together, the collet body goes into the torch, the end that has the little white insulation ring on it, not the other end. Screws in till it bottoms out. And I know there's a little wrench around here someplace to tighten this with, but I'll be darned if I can find it at the moment. So you just tighten that up just to, you know, like an eighth of a turn once it bottoms out. Your collet is going to go in from the other end. Just start your back cap just a little, and then your tungsten is going to slide in this way. Tighten all that down. You got your cap, your uh, cup on it. Your tungsten is sticking out about an eighth inch or so, and then you can just tighten up on the swivel on the torch. So now it's fixed, and now you're ready to go to work. How do you decide which cup to use? Ooh, is that a good question. Because of the different diameters in the ends of the cups, a big one, a medium size, a small one, and this is for the size of whatever kind of weld you're trying to do. You put a big cup on there if you want a lot of gas coverage, You'd go to a little cup if you were doing just, you know, a little, little, itty bitty, tiny weld someplace and you didn't want to have a lot of coverage there. But more importantly, for reaching down, like in between something, you're in a corner, you're in a real tight little spot somewhere where the little tiny cup is going to reach in there better. You're going to get a little closer to your weld, get a little better weld out of it. So we're good to go here. So let's hook it up to the machine. This is the front of the Lightning MTS-275, and I've got my air-cooled torch still hooked up to it. All you have to do is unscrew the finger control cable, that's what that is, and you're going to disconnect the power lead and the gas lead. Air-cooled torch is out of the way, and now hooking up the water-cooled torch, power lead goes back on, and now it's really, really important to remember with a water-cooled torch, you've got these three separate lines. The connectors are exactly the same, both on the sides and the holes on the ends. So it's really hard to tell which one goes where. So they color-coded the hoses. So the red one, that's the hot line in. The blue one is the cold, cold line coming out. The one, last one left over, that's your gas line. That puts the argon gas up to the torch head. And what happens if you screw that up, if you get this black one and either the red one or the blue one switched, is now you have coolant from the water cooler running out of the end of your torch, along with the electricity, along with the arc. That's not a good thing. When in doubt, you know, if you want to double check and make sure, you know, if you've got an old torch, if, you know, they're not color coded on your machine, a quick, easy way to find out for sure which one is which, Take one of the one of the gas line or one of the lines. You don't know which one it is, but blow in it. Not with the air hose. Just blow in it. Put it in your mouth and blow in it, and listen to the end of the torch. You know, if you hear air coming out of the end of the torch, that's your gas line. 
And the only reason I haven't put the finger control switch on this, like on the air-cooled torch, is because I'm going to use a foot pedal. I'll be sitting at the workbench, I'm working in a tight, tight, tiny little hole, you know, and I don't want that extra switch being in the way or the extra weight on the end of the torch. Because water-cooled torches, well, they have water in them. The whole line, everything's full of, of coolant. So they do weigh a little bit more than the air-cooled torches do. But they're smaller in diameter, so they're a little easier to maneuver. And just on the front of the water cooler itself, you have your reservoir. You can see it's got a pink antifreeze in it. This is tamper antifreeze, you know, like, like you'd run in your motorhome or something. The on-off switch, you know, it's got a level and uh, indicator in here to tell you how full your bottle actually is. And of course, the two hookups for the, you know, the in and the out. All I do is I'll leave this as switch on now because the water cooler is hooked to the back of the welder. That way, if I leave the switch on, anytime I turn the welder on, the cooler comes on. There's no danger of burning up your torch, you know, forgetting to turn the cooler on. And another good feature with the water cooled torch is, you know, the body of the torch itself stays relatively cool compared to the air cooled torches. That's the whole idea behind the water cooler is now you can sit there and weld at higher amperages all day long. So as far as putting the torch head itself together, all the different parts and pieces, that's pretty well standard through all the different torches you're going to run into out there. The parts may be shaped slightly different, but that's your basic assembly order there. That's all those parts go together that way. So if you're thinking about buying a water cooled torch for your TIG, hopefully this video points you in the right direction. I do appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that uh, subscription button down there for me, and I'll see you all next time. Your tungsten is going to slip up inside. <laughs> well, your tungsten is supposed to slip up inside. <laughs>